if you care to indulge it. Now, additionally, we have these different sequences and these different series. Now, I'm using them kind of interchangeably simply because series is where, really where we're going to live when we get used to this, but we do have to deal with it in terms of a sequence because that's how you get the individual terms before you can begin adding them. However, if you look, if we had a sequence like this, for example, if we were to graph those, uh, in the first term you get 1, in the second term you get 1, in the third term you get 3, in the fourth term you get 5, in the fifth term you get 8, and the sixth term you get 13, you'll notice that we're getting some sort of shape like this. As we go to infinity for x, or the number of terms, the y, or the result, is also going to be going to infinity. We're also going to be going to infinity. So this, uh, this idea here is divergent. Because it does not go along with the expectation. It does not come in toward the axis. It flies away from the axis. It becomes divergent. It becomes different. Therefore, you get preteen novels and crap like that with that name. So, with that, that's divergent. However, let's take something else. Let's take one where a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 times 1 half. Well, let's start with a nice um, let's start with a nice big number. Let's start with a sub one equals eight. Well, that means a sub two is going to equal what? Well, I have eight times one half equals four. Bring this down, and I say four times one half equals two. Bring this down. Two times one half equals one. And obviously you can see we have four, two, one, then it's going to go one half, one fourth, one eighth. And it's going to come down toward the x axis. This, of course, is going to be convergent because it's going to converge, it's going to come along with con, with the axis. Okay, now it, there are other things where it can converge to a different number but we'll get to that here in a little bit. So you have those. Now that's just using the sequence in the individual terms of the sequence. What we're going to deal with next is going to be series. And so if we go into series, remember series is nothing more than a sequence with plus signs rather than commas. So in this case, I can get each of the individual terms from a sub 1 all the way to a sub n if I care, okay? And this case, it's a finite series. Now all of a sudden, it's an infinite series, okay? So we have an infinite series. But of course, we already talked about you do not want to add all these terms up because you'd be adding an infinite number of terms together. So even in a simple mathematical operation like addition, you don't want to do it infinite times. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add up part of them, which is going to give us a partial sum. That partial sum is going to be however it is. Now I have one, two, three, four, five. I want the fifth partial sum. So since it's a sum, we call it S sub 5. And we're going to say 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5. That ought to be enough. Add up all those guys and you come up with 12. Okay. Now, if I wanted the infinite sum, that's going to be a bigger problem. And we're going to have to deal with that significantly later. So... For now, not so much. The other problem with this infinite sum is we already talked about how this graph does this number. So if, I, if the terms are going to infinity, obviously the sum of those terms is also going to be infinity, so it's going to be exceedingly large. Now, we also have this idea of summation notation. Okay, summation notation, which means it's going to be, instead of just writing the numbers out and adding them up, we could write it a little differently. I could, for example, write big sigma, capital sigma from Greek, from say 1 to 5. That means add from 
term one to term five, do five different steps, okay? And what I want is I need something that's explicit. Let's go find an explicit term because this only works on the explicit formulas, not the recursive formulas. So you'll notice there is no a sub n minus 1 in here because this is explicit. It's all based off the n's. So n goes from 1 to 5. Let's figure it out here. We have 2, and then we have negative 1, so it's negative 2. Then the next one is going to be 2, so I get 4, but since that's squared, it's even, so plus 4. Then I get 3, that's going to be 6, but it's going to be odd, so it's going to be negative 6. I'm going to do 4, that's going to be 8, but it's going to be positive, so plus 8. Plus, then we get 5, we get 10, but it's negative, negative 10. And I have to add all these together. Now, in this case, you say, all right, well... Uh, this case is going to be 2, they got positive 2, then I have uh, negative 4, then I'm going to have positive 4, then I'm going to have negative 6. So the answer to this question is negative 6, because that is the fifth partial sum. Fifth partial sum, so this equals S5. So we have partial sums. Now, we don't have to start at 1, we could have started this process at 2 to 5 and plugged in 2 initially and so my answer would have been 4 minus 6 plus 8 minus 10 and that would have changed the sum of course because I would have had less negative so I believe you'd end up with negative 4 we get uh, a yeah, negative 16 positive 12 yeah good to go now if again I wanted to go to infinity I could say from 1 to infinity well from 1 to infinity would be an infinite sum and that would be somewhat of an issue here because it's going back and forth. If we were to graph this guy, the individual terms go negative 2, positive 4, negative 6, positive 8, negative 10, they go away. But the sum itself, you'll notice, keeps getting brought to the middle and the sum, the initial sum is negative 2. The next sum is positive 2 then it became negative 4, then it became positive, then it became negative, and it's going to go back, but it's not going to be going up as fast as the individual terms. So the problem here with finding this infinite sum is it's going to be going back and forth, and it's going to be getting bigger. So all of these are sequence series sum um, and all of this gets put together in section one. We'll go into section two and three talking about specific types of sequences and series. That's going to be arithmetic and geometric. So with that, let me throw you down some homework. And here is the homework. And one of the suggestions was leave it on the screen for five seconds. So five, four, three, two, push pause, one.